creating a midwifery super bill. So this is something that some midwifery practices do, some don't. Our general legal disclaimer, all of the information is for educational purposes. It's not to substitute for legal, clinical, professional advice. We try to keep our information as timely and accurate as possible, but every midwifery practice and local regulations are different. So we really want you to just do your due diligence with all this content and tips and guidance to customize to your own unique needs. The course objectives, students will be able to verbalize exactly what a super bill is. The students will be able to know how to give a super bill to one of their clients. They will be able to verbalize what's included on a super bill. They'll be able to verbalize the benefits of a super bill. The students will be able to verbalize how payments work with clients submitting super bills. And the students will be able to verbalize how midwives can support families better with providing a super bill. So I always like to start out the conversations. Why is this important? I wanted to add this to our billing and coding. I get quite a few questions across the country. Most midwives are self-pay, they're cash, they want nothing to do with insurance plans, but their families would love to get reimbursed from the insurance companies for the services that are being rendered. So how do we help them? It's one thing just to say, call your insurance company, tell them the care that was given and show them the receipts and hopefully you'll get paid, but they're gonna have a far better chance to get paid when you provide your families a professional, condensed, official super bill that has all the codes, all the services, all the diagnosis, they have a much higher chance of getting their insurance company to pay them back not saying you have to do the work. They're the ones on the phone, they're the ones doing appeals, they're the ones taking care of that attempt to get paid. Midwives have a responsibility to provide access to different ways to charge for resources like a super bill that the families are requesting to their insurance company. The more that we can get insurances to cover midwifery care, even for your own specific practice, you're gonna get a lot more referrals because having to do self-pay really barriers a lot of families being able to choose our amazing services. Actually is a super bill. A super bill is a statement for the actual insurance reimbursement. It is a summary of all the different great things that we are providing in our care that is condensed to translate into the insurance company's language lingo so that they can reimburse the family for the services they paid for you. It's an official invoice. It goes into details, the treatments, the dates of service, the diagnosis, everything that was offered to your moms and babies you're serving. Provided to a customer, they attempt to get full reimbursement of the expenses from an insurance company. Depending if they have an HMO where it's in network only, probably not gonna get covered. Sometimes you can get an out of network exemption. Sometimes it has to be done ahead of time with prior OS and physician referrals. But if they have a PPO, out of network benefits, there's a very high probability it's going to at least go towards their deductible if their deductible is met for out-of-network providers, they'll get reimbursed by the insurance company. It's important for midwives to be able to provide super bills to their clients that are requesting them. So how do you create a medical super bill? We have one attached to the course that's a great template for you to utilize. You just have to fill it out. We customize it to newborn, maternity care, common charges that midwives do. You wanna verify that their insurance plan is active, so you're gonna do all this work and then find out that they don't even have insurance coverage at this time. These are the different things you wanna put on the super bill. You wanna put the medical record number, the mom, the patient's name, date of birth, address, phone number, contact information, the insurance provider, the ID, you as a provider, the gender of the patient you're taking care of. So you're gonna have two super bills. You're gonna have one for the moms and you're gonna have one for the babies because they're two separate patients. 
How do you create a medical super bill? We already had listed all the things that the patient had to have on it. Also, you need to have everything for the practice contact information. So you want to have how can the insurance company get a hold of you if they need additional documentation, they have questions, the complete practice name, the business EIN, the provider information, the NPI, the national provider identification number, the address for the practice, the contact information, whether it's the office number, it's your cell phone because you're small and private, the fax number, which is really important to have the fax number so if they can send requests automated. Email is not used as much just with HIPAA and things like that. And just being careful if they're requesting records that the family has given you permission to release medical records to the insurance company as part of your standard HIPAA consents in release of records on file. How do you create a super bill? You write down all the dates of service. You write down all the prenatal visits. Were they done in the office? Were they done at home? The diagnosis, was it normal healthy pregnancy? Were there complications present? Labor management, day of delivery, any service. If they had Rogam, if they decided to get the Tdap vaccination, any care you are directly providing. And if there's problem visits, if there's days that they ask to be seen that's not part of their normal routine visits because they've got an asthma attack, they've got a flu symptoms, they've got an ear infection, they've got things that are very specific outside of maternity care, you want to give credit for those as office problem visits, and that's above and beyond maternity. So making sure that every diagnosis, every data service is being placed on the super bill or given multiple super bills for each of the separate occurrences. You want to make sure the diagnosis codes are accurate. So if they're normal, healthy pregnancy, you put down the appropriate, if it's a first time mom, prima gravida, what trimester was she in when that data service was done, there's very specific codes you can utilize. And th the whole point is the diagnosis code tells the insurance company, this is what I seen them for and this is why, and it's consistent with the documentation on file. CPT codes have to do with more of the procedures. What were the direct services being rendered? Was it a routine prenatal visit? Was it a problem office visit? Was it one-on-one -on -one labor support? Was it a vaginal uncomplicated delivery? Was it normal postpartum care? Was it a home visit for breastfeeding support? What were all these different things and what is the specific procedure code affiliated with those diagnoses. So for example, 59400 is the CPT code for global maternity care. Place of service is still important. Did you see them in your office? Did they have a delivery at the birth center? Did you do home visits? Because some insurance companies will deny that you may have the right diagnosis, you may have the right uh, procedure code, but they don't pay for it in that place of service. Maybe even the provider type, when you talk about who you are and your NPI number, they may not cover that type of provider on their list of rendering services. So it, it's, it's a complicated process. You have to really know the insurance companies well. And, and when you're doing super bills and you're sending out, you want to be as comprehensive and detailed as possible. So when you're making a super bill at the bottom, you really want to put what's the balance due? Did your family still owe you money or did they pay $3,000, $4,000? There's no balance due. They paid for all their care because you want the payment from the insurance company to go to the family. You don't want to deal with it. You don't want the funds to come your direction. So most midwives across the country have families pay between 32 to 36 weeks gestation, and then they'll give them a super bill as six weeks postpartum because now all the care has been completed for them to get reimbursed for. And it's really important that the clinician signs the bottom of the super bills to show that you were the one directly filled it out and that it's accurate. Or you can have your staff, you can have your receptionist, you can have your biller, you can have your office manager complete the super bill, but you still, as the provider, the one validating this is accurate, need to sign the super bill. So benefits of creating a super bill for you and for your clients, I can't stress enough, like, it's not that hard once you train yourself and you get in the habit. Just like giving them a copy of their records at six weeks postpartum, you just automatically do a super bill. You have your staff, you train them. You don't have to do everything. I think midwives get so overwhelmed because they're like, this is one more extra 
task I have to do. This is something very easy to be delegated to your biller, your receptionist, your office manager. You just double check it's all accurate and sign it. Clients are typically more happy. I mean, if they can get their insurance to pay you versus they're having a baby every other year and they're having four, five, six kids, you've just saved them fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 that they pay a bunch of money every single month for their insurance premiums that they would like. If they would have chosen the hospital with the Affordable Care Act, it would have been covered 100%. So it's really important for us as midwives when they're choosing out a hospital, they're choosing midwifery care, when we're self-pay and we're not advocating to help get insurance reimbursement for them. We don't have to directly be doing all the work for it, but we should at least be providing them a super bill that they can advocate and have the best capable insurance claim processing tool to provide the insurance company to get paid. The more that we can get insurance companies to pay for midwifery care, the more likely they're going to see us more often, they'll come in for GYN, they'll come in for more services, and they're going to reform, refer more of their friends. It's one thing when they say, oh my gosh, I had this amazing home birth, it cost me $4,000 versus I had this amazing home birth and my insurance covered it and I paid a fraction of the cost that you would have in the hospital people are going to fill up your practice much faster when they know their insurance will process and pay for midwifery care. So our whole point is we want to help bridge these barriers that are present to access midwifery services and a good chunk of it, if they have out of network benefits, PPO benefits, there should be no reason unless there's regulations in your states and it's hard with licensure to recognize you as a professional with the insurance world. If they have PPO benefits and you give them a good, strong super bill, they should be able to get their insurance plan to count it towards their out-of-network deductible or send them a check in the mail for reimbursement. The ways it can help out the practice, it'll attract more clients. You do not directly have to deal with the insurance company. You just have to give them a one-page super bill that helps them so they can advocate for reimbursement. It's going to increase your revenue to the practice. You're going to have more clients. You're going to save a lot of time. You don't have to personally deal with the insurance plan using a super bill. And we already talked about it, it'll save the midwives, just like you're going to give them a copy of their records at six weeks postpartum so you don't have to worry with pediatrician or if they ask for it later, you've got a standard protocol. Provide them a super bill if they paid you cash for services and you know they have an insurance plan that's a PPO and we'll reimburse them. You get paid immediately. You get paid 32, 36 weeks gestation. You don't have to be on the hold with insurance plans. You don't have to do prior offs. You do not have to do any of the physician referrals, the claims, the denials, the waiting for payments months and months on end and worrying about getting audited. A super bill is simple. You give it to your family after the delivery. You can use it for a professional. You can use it for birth center facility fees. There's two separate claim processing systems for professional and facility. So just putting them on separate super bills and having that available for families will really help them with reimbursement process. So how does the payment work? The super bill does not affect your fee schedule. It does not affect you personally getting paid. What a super bill does, it allows a family that has out of network benefits to try to get reimbursed from their insurance company. It's not a mandatory thing. You're not required to do it. It's kind of one of those additional above and beyond things where maybe the other midwives in the area aren't offering it to their families. And now we, our whole point is we want to bridge the gap of how can we get more access to midwifery services. The more we can get insurance to reimburse for our care, and that includes us giving the families a super bill so it's easier for them to get reimbursed, the more we're going to be able to spread midwifery services. And kind of having a basic discussion with your family. I mean, you can save a lot of work creating a super bill by asking them a couple simple questions. Do you have insurance right now? Yes or no? Do you have insurance with out-of-network benefits? Yes or no? If they have out-of-network benefits, get a sense of their deductible. Because in the family should be able to know. If they have a $10,000 out-of-network deductible, it probably doesn't make sense unless they're seeing other people out-of-network that year to even submit it. Because the average midwifery care is $4,000, and if they have a deductible of 10, they're gonna submit the super bill, do all this work, 
and it's just going to count that 4000 will count towards their deductible that hasn't even been met yet. The insurance company is not going to write your families a check until the out of network deductible has been met. So there's some three simple questions to ask your families to save you and them a bunch of time because they're going to be pissed. They're going to be mad. They're going to be frustrated if they do all this work, they think they're going to get paid, but then they don't even understand that they have a high out of network deductible that it just went towards. So it's really important to have good detailed discussions. And these are simple questions. It would take three minutes at a new OB asking about their insurance. And if you just check box, yep, at six weeks postpartum, we're going to give them a super bill because it makes the most sense. They've got out of network deductible and they've got uh, out of network benefits and they've got a deductible that's low enough that we know we can get them some services reinforced. Who submits it? This is the cool part, midwives do. The client submits it. We can as a courtesy, but I personally want that would not want that responsibility. We are not getting paid to reverse reimburse the families and submit their claims in the backdrops. Like you can do it as a courtesy if you'd like to, but I encourage most midwives, just give them a super bill at six weeks postpartum. Tips to preparing for the super bill. You just want to make sure that you're putting down every visit, you're putting down the diagnosis, you're putting down the CPT code, you're putting the place of service. Every single point of care that you're providing is being placed on that super bill. And things that get a higher chance of reimbursement because of the accuracy and it reflects your documentation. So asking those few questions about their insurance benefits, figuring out, I mean, if they have an HMO, or Medicaid and you know they don't pay, Medicaid doesn't pay for home births in your state, don't worry about a super bill. So we already talked about it. it's really important just to have them accurate. There's great tools. I've attached it to this section of the course that's really comprehensive. You just do check, check, fill in. It should take your receptionist office manager 10 minutes to do when they know how to look through the documentation of the midwifery care to to complete it. Um, so our whole point, and I'll just stress it over and over again, submitting super bills, if they have out of network benefits, low deductibles, we know we can get them a check to help pay for their midwifery care. We're going to improve access to our services. Super bills aren't just something we could be doing for our clients, but it's rather something we should be doing. I think it's something that's missed on a national level, and there's a lot of opportunities for midwifery practices to provide these super bills to some of their clients.